Daddy, maybe the American people don't want the country back. Where do I even begin? I'm going to try to make this quick and get right to the point. Zero Hedge recently noted that the American people have a long history of getting the president they deserve. Maybe. Maybe not. Once again, it seems the people have chosen a warmongering neocon globalist over the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. The InfoWars writer, whose pen name is Eric Blair, George Orwell's real name, made the point that many of us have been thinking since the Iowa caucus. He asks, how on earth could Newt Gingrich win the South Carolina primary when the day before the vote he had to cancel a major campaign stop because of a lack of attendance? What if the fix is in? Over the years, numerous folks have said to me that if there's more to the story of what we are officially told happened on 9-11, then surely the media would report on it. There could be no cover-up by the mainstream media, they say, because any alternative story would be the perfect opportunity for some hungry young reporter to make a name for himself. Talk show host Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be able to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan Surely a truth would prevail. Surely, they say, if there was nanothermate found in the dust at Ground Zero, or if World Trade Center Building 7 was brought down by a controlled demolition, it would be reported on. This is no small building, as you can see, at 47 stories. It would stand out in most American cities. The American media would tell us there's no way they could keep it covered up, they say. And so, Life goes on, with the average American content in the belief that nothing is wrong, because if it were not so, surely the media would tell us. We are told that Ron Paul finished in fourth place in South Carolina. As Eric Blair writes, quote, primary elections are traditionally driven by enthusiasm. In other words, the average voter does not turn out for primaries unless they are motivated by a certain candidate. So could someone please explain to me how Newt Gingrich, who has virtually no ground game, no money, and no fervent supporters, just won the South Carolina primary? Now it seems to me that for every one person motivated enough to show up in support of a candidate's speech or to vote in a primary, there must be at least 10 or 50 or 100 more people who couldn't find the time to get there but support that candidate nonetheless. Ron Paul enjoyed the support of over 1,000 people when he spoke in Charleston. Newt Gingrich had to cancel his event. Blair asks, could the conspiracy to keep Ron Paul out of the Oval Office be this coordinated, this pervasive? I hate to say it, but I think the answer is yes. The system is fixed. The continuity of government plan, the details of which are secret, which was implemented on 9-14 by George Bush and was re-signed every year since 9-11, most recently by Obama is still in effect. Why has the media done such precious little reporting on the continuity of government plan, or the fact that Congress can't see the classified details of the plan? Nor has the press adequately covered the NDAA S-1867, which allows the military to declare the homeland a battlefield and hold you in a military detention camp without a trial, or the Enemy Expatriation Act, or the widespread use of diebold voting machines which are easily hacked. Why is that? The coup is complete. The government is no longer of and by the people. The government is of the central banks and for the corporations. This is fascism. And the system no longer desires the rule of law or the constitution or the Bill of Rights. The system and those who would vote for Newt Gingrich, Mitt Romney, or Rick Santorum only want more of this.
Thanks for watching and check out sgtreport.com for more each day. Good night.